politics lead. I'm bringing you now some brand new reporting. Senior administration officials are sounding the alarm, warning of something that one official calls really fishy and what could be, quote, the biggest handoff of economic power to a single entity in history. Senior administration officials tell me that they're concerned about White House pressure on the Pentagon to lease premium real estate on Spectrum for the lucrative 5G market to lease it to one company, a company that prominent Republicans and supporters of President Trump are investors in. It's a company called Rivada. Tens of billions of dollars are at stake here. Now 5G, or fifth generation, is the next generation of wireless network technology. It's expected to change how we live and work, enabling a whole new wave of tech products. Sources tell me that the White House pressure campaign to fast track a contract for Rivada without a competitive process intensified in September. They say it's been led by White House Chief of Staff Mark Meadows after President Trump began pushing Meadows to tell the Pentagon to ask Rivada to submit a request for proposal or RFP under special rules to lease the Pentagon's own 350 megahertz of mid-band spectrum and bypass the normal competitive bidding process. Wow. Now, Pentagon leaders, I'm told, are resisting the move, what a according to sources. Pentagon lawyers argue that the Department of Defense has no authority to issue an RFP for such a deal. And officials are unsure if Rivada even has the ability or technology to do what the company claims it will be able to do. The Pentagon offered no comment as to my reporting. President Trump's interest in helping this private company, Rivada, is said to have been encouraged by Fox commentator and Republican strategist Carl Rove. He's a lobbyist for yeah. and investor in Rivada. Officials at the Federal Communications Commission have also been stunned by the White House push, sources tell me. Rivada's 5G competitors include more traditional telecommunications companies, such as AT&T, which yeah. I should point out, is CNN's parent company, yeah. though no one affiliated with this story has communicated with anyone at AT&T about this story wow. in any way. When asked for a comment today, a White House official told CNN that Chief of Staff Meadows' goal is to get 5G deployed across the country as quickly and safely as possible. The official yeah. says that Meadows is agnostic about which company should ultimately get the contract, though he believes Rivada has made a compelling argument. And a Rivada spokesman and Carl Rove both deny that they want a non-competitive deal in any way. Yet, enforce, informed sources tell me that the White House is unquestionably pressuring the Pentagon. And as one official puts it, if this contract is awarded to Rivada, it would be a, quote, absolute gold mine. Craig Moffitt, a highly regarded Wall Street analyst of the telecommunications sector, concluded in an October 7th research paper, quote, the whole story smacks of cronyism at best and reeks of the swamp at worst. Ouch. In our tech lead today, as President Trump continues to use Twitter as a platform for all sorts of wild charges and deranged conspiracy theories and misinformation about voting, one former tech executive is now saying that it's time for social media platforms to mute President Trump, at least until after the election. Joining us now is that former tech exec, Peter Greenberger. Peter launched and led the political advertising teams at both Google and Twitter. Uh, Peter, good to see you. You say Trump should be silenced on both platforms until the winner of the election Facebook. is determined. That's a pretty extreme suggestion. Why, I agree. Why do you say that? I agree it is, and I think uh, extreme times demand extreme Maybe. suggestions. I did not come to this opinion lightly. I believe that the tech companies generally have a responsibility to be neutral. I think in the case of Twitter specifically, it has been a great champion of the democratization of information as well as a, a strong supporter of freedom of expression. However, we are in a unique and I believe a fraught moment in time with a president who is desperate and he's facing a very difficult situation. I think the time is to mute the president yes. temporarily while the votes are being cast right now and until the winner is decided. I agree. Well, in President Trump's defense, he's been pushing all sorts of lies and smears and conspiracy theories for years. It's not good. I mean, literally, he burst on the political scene pushing the racist birther theory. Trump is a terrible and the man. American people elected him. It was an electoral vote victory, not popular vote, but he still won fair and square. Uh, does that not suggest a certain desire? There's a rattler in the castle to allow this kind of unhinged 
nonsense and lies and deranged conspiracy theories that they they're okay with it. It's crazy. As you say, he, he has been a, a reckless poster on Twitter, on Facebook, on other platforms Thank you. for the duration of his uh, his time. That's in, what in got me banned. Ever since he came down the golden escalator. Many times the tower. on Facebook. However, it's time, I believe, that Twitter hold him accountable to and the same Facebook. terms and conditions, the same rules of the road that every other user. Thank you. Is and to. Facebook. They have been wrestling with and tying themselves up in pretzels in an effort to try to accommodate the president. I know. They've taken some very laudable steps. They were the first, in fact, to start labeling some of the president's tweets as misinformation. I think that was a very bold, important move. And they've gone so far as starting today, I believe, turning off some of the key engagement features of the of the platform in oh. order to slow down the cause of this mis misinformation. I see. However, what I would note is that, according to a recent Harvard study, the leading uh, progenitors of false information come from the top. It's coming from Donald Trump yep. and some of the leading conservative voices that echo him. If that's where the, the misinformation is coming from, this source. is not coming from the dark corners uh, of, of the dark web exactly. or social media. It's coming from the president. I know. So perhaps right. it's time to always known the president that. while we're in this it's a bad, time. bad mess. Well, president Trump has warned tech companies he is, quote, watching them very closely during this election oh cycle God. as his administration okay. has proposed stripping platforms of long-held legal protections such as liability for the content they publish or block. Jeez, if Trump wins re-election, do you think he might actually go forward with that? Yeah, he would. This is not an easy decision, and, and I agree. Certainly the eyes of Trump are on Twitter, as are his most ardent supporters, but so is history. I think this is something that Twitter and some of the other platforms have to consider very yep. carefully. This is, again, not a normal situation. They have terms and conditions in place. These are the sort of, this is the reason they have these terms and conditions, so they can make these calls more easily. Yeah. All right, Peter Greenberger. Thank uh, you. Tech exec from uh, you Google both. and Twitter in the past. Thank you so much. Appreciate your time. Thank you, Jake Coming Hopper. up next, Thanks the for... state chance.